Let's bring in former Reagan economist and the author of Trumponomics, Art Laffer. Art, great to see you. Thanks very much for weighing in here. Your thoughts on what we're seeing for the second quarter GDP, better than expected, up 6.7 percent. How do you read it? Well, it's yeah, well, it's nice that it's better than expected, but you would expect a good jump there. And there is a good jump as the COVID-19 disappears and people come back to work. That's all very natural and very expected. I, I, I don't think of those numbers as being terrific and wonderful. In fact, I really don't see much in any of these numbers that tell me there's some sort of uh, you know, diamond ring to be in that lost and found, as Brooks and Dunn say. Uh, there, there's nothing really good in the news that I'm reading on the bills or any of this. And the unemployment claims at three, what is it, uh, three thirty-seven or forty, or, it is a very large number, and it just goes to show that people being paid not to work won't work, and that's why you get these claims higher and higher. And with job openings all over the place, how can you have increasing unemployment claims and increasing job openings? Well, the only way you can do that is if these people are paid more not to work than they are working. Yeah, I mean, it's really incredible to me that now at this point in time when we've got so many openings and businesses can't find workers to actually take the jobs that we're actually telling people you're going to be fired if you don't get the vaccine. I mean, what is that going to do to an already stressed situation? Uh, Navy SEALs may not get deployed if they're not vaccinated. Border agents going to be fired. Healthcare workers looking for other work because they don't want to get the vaccine. I mean, it just adds to an already stressed situation for the economy. That's just one angle of it. Yeah, well, you're completely right. There are no good pieces of news anywhere in the place about the economy and the country. To be very serious, they're just plain aren't. This bill is full of awful things that they're putting in. Now, whether they pass it or not, I mean, when the best news in the, in the marketplace is that we finally decided to defeat a bad bill, that's not really good news. That's not pro-growth agendas. Uh, we're just staving off attacks one after another. And I really don't see the light at the end of this tunnel until there's a political change in Washington, and that won't be for a little bit of t next 2022. Yep. Dagan McDowell, jump in. Art, right. I don't want to, I don't want to sound like a chicken little, but I'm, and there are many things to worry about in this life, but I'm legitimately frightened by this $5 trillion plus welfare expansion that the, the left is pushing, not just the left, just the Democrats, that it, it creates so many new entitlements that it removes a kind of individual freedom and uh, uh, the initiative and the to work and yeah, strive sure. and be better and that it saddles this country with bureaucrats and politicians in charge of our everyday lives and then bankrupts us at the same time. And you hear these Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden talking to the American people like we're stupid, like we don't understand basic math. I, even if so, small part of this is passed, it's profoundly dangerous to the future of the country, is it not? Yeah, I, I, I don't mean to just support your position, but you're completely correct. Uh, and, you know, there's nothing but dangerous stuff in this bill. Uh, it, it destroys the work ethic for the U.S. And after being in destroyed for a while, let's say these people stay unemployed, the continuing claims are very high if they stay for a while, they lose their requisite skills, uh, Dagan, to come back into the labor force and perform, perform well in their jobs. So, you know, it has a long-term consequences, and, and it's all sitting there. There, there is not a, a shiny object in this whole piece of legis legislation my view. Now, uh, you can have a little bit better growth this or a little bit less unemployment that. But bottom line, the general directions of this country right now are very much in the wrong direction and, and portend uh, less prosperity in the future. Now, that all will change, yeah. I believe, in 2022. But it should be changed right now. This is a bad bill to be put forward, and they should be ashamed.
Well, it's, it's, it's actually as if they're ignoring the realities of the day. I mean, look at the stress that we're seeing uh, in the economy right now as it exists. To throw on all of that spending on top of, for example, the supply chains uh, and the struggles that we're seeing as a result of COVID. Bed Bath & Beyond today cut its full-year profit forecast. The stock yeah. is tanking. It said that the supply chain crunch is impacting the entire industry. And then we had on the head of the port of Long Beach, Mario Cordero, earlier in the week. And here's what he said about the supply crunch and its impact. Watch this. I think as we move forward towards uh, the second quarter of 2022, uh, we'll We'll see a consumer demand or consumer purchasing tapering down. Keep in mind, we're in peak season in this industry. And what that means is high yeah. volume holiday purchasing. So I think we're going to have this wow. situation for the next few months, but hopefully beginning next year, it'll taper. So, Art, we're not wow. going to get out of this supply crunch, according to the director of Long Beach Port, until at least the second quarter of 2022. Instead of alleviating that, this administration is putting more pressure by firing people if they don't comply with their mandate and putting more spending in place in the face of an already fragile situation. Your thoughts? Well, I don't mean to giggle at it. It's just piling back. It, it, it's 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 like a Marx Brothers movie. It's it's like Charlie Chaplin. It's it, it's just grotesque. Everything they do is anti-production. You know, when you look at what it costs a firm to hire a worker, total cost, all in taxes and everything, and then what that worker receives net compared to what that worker would receive if he or she didn't work. You know, those that gap is increasing dramatically. It's destroying the whole production base. And if I can just say one thing, there's no act more immoral than government can perpetrate on its citizenry than enact policies that have the effect of destroying the production base from which all benefits ultimately flow. And that's what they're doing. They're going yeah. in and systematically trying to destroy the production base. And that's what makes America great. The top 1% are the best of the best. We have the best people for innovation and hiring and all that in the world. And they're trying to destroy yeah. them. Well, the Biden and, administration and it, wants to do I think Dagan's right. She should be, you should be afraid. Yeah. And what you guys are doing, I think, is a wonderful job uh, of, of passing on and passing on information that's correct. But why is every Democrat voting for this stuff? All of them. What type of power does Nancy Pelosi have over good, nice, decent, wonderful people? All those Democratic con congressional people, they're all wonderful. They know better than this. They know it's wrong. And yet yeah. that discipline, they can hold it and get them all to vote in, in favor of this horrible bill. I, I just don't see it. I don't yeah, understand well, so what's happened mansion, to real democracy so far, in America. Mansion and cinema. Mansion and Cinema seems to well, be Manchin, holding strong yeah, against ahead. this massive spending. But I want to get your take on this one element where Joe Biden wants to uh, spend $80 billion uh, on the IRS. He wants to hire 80,000 new auditors. As, uh, and, and one of the proposals that would force banks to report transactions of $600 or more to the IRS. The White House says that this could bring in $460 billion in additional revenue over the decade. And are, they want to raise this revenue so that they could put the SALT deduction back in. So, I mean, think about that for a second. They want to appease the rich people in New York and New Jersey so that they can have a SALT deduction. They want to deduct their uh, state and local taxes. So you're, you're giving it to the rich, but you're zeroing in and scrutinizing anybody who uh, has a $600 or more transaction. Now, I know that now they're saying, well, maybe we'll do 10000 not 600 But even 10000 it's over a year. So, again, everybody gets impacted. The IRS is going to be watching everything you do. And who knows if it's going to lead to more uh, politicizing at the IRS. We've seen that before under the Obama administration. Here we go again. Yeah. Well, let me, let me just say, Maria, that the IRS is one of the most competent agencies of the government. They and the OMB, there are a few of them that are really, really competent professional organizations. And if you look at what happened to taxes from the top 1% this last year, I think they were up to 40%, a big rise. These people are paying their taxes. They want to pay their taxes. They're part of the system. You don't need to increase the IRS effectiveness. What you want to do is make sure that the wealthy, the people with incomes, the people who do pay taxes, think that they're fair 
and pay them voluntarily and then have the IRS collect the, find the scoff laws and the, and the breakers there. But, you know, right now, if you lowered tax rates and got a flat tax the way Jerry Brown proposed back in 92, you'd have huge floods of revenues coming in from the top 1%. You don't need to increase the IRS by huge amounts. They're as good as it gets right now, and those revenues are coming in yeah. right now. What we need to do is get this well, economy always... growing. That's what we need. Yep. And he keeps saying, pay your fair share, pay your fair share, even though 10 percent of, of the population, the highest earners, are paying 70 percent of all taxes. And now we get this report that Joe Biden owes half a million dollars to the IRS because <laughs> the way he, I mean, it's unbelievable, the way that he uh, uh, accounted for uh, his book deals and his speeches. He, he said he had an S corp. So now he has, so he needs to pay his fair share. Art, I mean, we know that. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to touch that Thank one, Hunter Biden, either, Maria. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is a riot. But that's what's happening with everyone. You know, when you raise taxes, make them unfair, people will try to get around them. That's just as simple as that. Yeah. They'll try to get around. And forcing exactly. people to pay taxes, much better to have it voluntary, much pe better yeah. that people want to help America, want to support their country, not that you force them to do it and are angry with them. That's just not yeah. the way to run a country, and these people won't stop. Well. It, it leads to unintended consequences. You're right. Like people taking money sure out does. of the country and hiding it elsewhere. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Art. Great to In talk fact, with I've you. In fact, I've got a we book coming. Time, well, Art Laffer. Nice talk with you, Maria.